Hello and welcome back to another video here on my channel. Today's video is going to be about 10 things that you need to know about the UK before you move here. So whether you are in the process of moving, maybe just thinking about moving or maybe if you're just curious about the UK, this video will hopefully highlight a few things that you need to know. If you're new here, hi, my name is Sim and you might not know, but I am a South African that has moved to the UK and I am currently living in Scotland in Edinburgh. Personally, I wish I knew some of these things before moving here, so hopefully this video will help anyone who's in the same position that I was a few months ago. If you're moving here, you might have visited the UK before on holiday, but let me tell you, being a tourist in a country and actually living in it is completely different. Once you actually live in a country for a while, you obviously have more time to pick up on more details and you also have the chance to actually experience what it is like living in that country. So these 10 points are going to be based on my experience as a South African moving to the UK. I also lived in England for a few months and as I mentioned, I am in Scotland now. So I've had a chance to experience different parts of the UK. With all that said, let's move on to the first thing that you need to know about the UK before moving here. If you're moving here, you obviously need a place to stay. So you need to know that the rent in the UK is really expensive. Not only are you paying more, you are also definitely going to get less space than you would usually get in South Africa because on average, the houses here in the UK are a lot smaller. Flats are also really common here in the UK, especially in the cities, but just because it's a flat it doesn't mean you're paying less. You're probably paying the same as a three bedroom house outside of the city. In general, the rent in the city centres are more expensive whether you are in a flat or a house because you are paying for that convenience of being close to everything. In the city, the chance of having a garden is also pretty slim. You might have a shared garden, but having your own private garden is quite rare. So if you want to have a garden or maybe you have pets and a garden is necessary, I would recommend rather looking outside of the city where the chances of having a private garden is a lot bigger. When we lived in England, we lived just outside of Oxford, so we weren't in the city centre, but still close enough to get there in a few minutes with the bus and we had a massive garden and we even had a view of a deer farm that was next to us. So the option is there to have a garden, it just depends on which area you want to stay in and you just need to keep in mind that if you live outside of the city centre, you won't have that convenience of just being able to walk to the shops or the pub but you will most likely still be able to catch a bus the next thing you need to know is also related to rent and housing when you live in the UK you don't just have to pay rent you also have to pay council tax this isn't an expense that we have in South Africa, so I had no idea that this even existed before moving to the UK. Basically, areas here in the UK are grouped into different council areas and you pay that tax to the council, as the name suggests, so that they can maintain the area. This includes things like paying for the rubbish collection service, maintaining the roads, street lights, and here in Scotland, it also includes your water. Different houses will also have different tax bands and this depends on the value of the property that you're staying in. So when you're looking at a property online, they will also mention which tax band the property is in. Remember to include this in your monthly budget because it's something that you can't avoid, you need to pay it. The council will send you a letter when you move in to show you a breakdown of your monthly payments and then you can either set up a debit order for that to just go off automatically or you can just pay it online every month. Moving on to the third thing you need to know, I want to cover some tips on using public transport here in the UK. It's definitely not uncommon to have a car here in the UK, but if you've just moved from South Africa, you might not want that extra expense of also buying a car and the public transport is very efficient and also affordable. Personally, the public transport that I've used the most is the bus because that's super easy to just use here in the city to get around. But there are a few things that I didn't know the first time I used the bus. The tricky thing is that the system also works different depending on where you are, 
And this difference isn't just between England and Scotland, there's also a difference depending on which area you are using the bus in. For example, in Oxford and here in Edinburgh, when you get on the bus, you tell the bus driver where you are going and then you purchase the ticket. In London, however, you just get on the bus, you don't tell the driver where you're going, you just scan your card on the contactless scanner. The next thing that's important to know about the bus is that it won't necessarily stop at the next bus stop if you don't press the stop button on the bus. This happened to me the first time I arrived here in the UK. I had no idea that you had to actually press the button for the bus to stop and it completely went past the point where I had to get off. So I went into a bit of a panic, I didn't know what to do and then I just got off at the next place where the bus stopped. Luckily it wasn't too far but I had my massive bags because I've just flown from South Africa. So I then had to struggle with these bags all the way back to the Airbnb. Luckily my husband made me halfway so he could help me but hopefully you will know in advance now to just press the button. When you start to use the bus system, you obviously won't know the stops and the routes, but one thing that's really helpful for this is Google Maps. If you put in the destination that you want to go, it will tell you which bus stop to go to, and it will also tell you at which bus stop you need to get off. It also updates the bus arrival times in real time, so you can see if a bus is delayed or if it's arriving soon. Once you're on the bus, you can also track your route, so it will show you on the map each stop that's coming up. Maybe you decide you do want to buy a car. The good news is that secondhand cars in the UK is super cheap. Just make sure that your parallel parking skills are on point because that's basically the only form of parking available here in the UK. In South Africa, when you go to the shops, you are always going to park in a parking lot. And if you visit someone, you will probably park in their driveway. But here in the UK, it's mainly just on street parallel parking. To be honest, I still can't parallel park. My angles are just completely off, but hopefully with some practice, I'll eventually get there. Another thing that you need to know about owning a car in the UK is that although the secondhand cars are cheap, the car insurance is crazy expensive. I mean, no one likes to pay insurance. It's one of those things that you just have to do in case of emergencies. Even in South Africa, car insurance felt expensive, but here in the UK, it's definitely on another level. The car insurance plan that we bought covers us for a whole year, but it was basically the same amount that we paid for the car. Sticking to the whole theme of driving, another thing that you should know before moving is that there are also potholes here on the road in the UK. I felt like it was important to mention this one because I feel like South Africans get really triggered by potholes. I mean, I do understand why because it is a danger on the road and personally, I've also lost tires due to potholes, but unfortunately, that problem is going to follow you here in the UK. If you think about it, it does kind of make sense because obviously the UK is really old, so the roads are really old and you can definitely see that there's been a lot of work done patching some of the areas. I think this is especially applicable to the city centers again. If you go onto the highway, that's definitely not something that you need to worry about. The highway and main roads are definitely maintained really well, but I've definitely seen a lot of potholes and roadworks here in the city. At least there are roadworks trying to fix the potholes, but don't be shocked when you move to the UK and you still have to deal with potholes. Another thing that's not going to disappear when you move to the UK from South Africa is unfortunately poverty. Poverty is a really big problem in South Africa and it's heartbreaking to see all the beggars on the street and all the homeless people. And it might be ignorance, but I didn't expect to see homelessness and poverty to the degree that I've seen here in the UK. Especially in the big cities like London, you will see a lot of homeless people sleeping on the street, similar to what you see in Joburg. So I think it's important to keep in mind, just because the UK is a developed country, it doesn't mean there isn't poverty and hardship here as well. I wouldn't say it's as bad as South Africa because there isn't a beggar at every corner, but of course it's always difficult to see someone struggling, it doesn't matter what country you are in. 
Next up on the list of things that you need to know is that you're gonna have to deal with mold. In South Africa, I lived in Gauteng, so I was not close to the coast at all. So dealing with mold might be a problem that people on the coastal areas of South Africa are used to. Durban especially comes to mind because it is quite humid there. But being from Pretoria and living in Joburg, this was definitely not something that I ever had to deal with before. Because it's super rainy here in the UK and England can be quite humid as well, you constantly have to check that there's no mold growing on the windows or especially in the bathroom. Most rental agreements will mention that you as the occupier needs to make sure that there's no mold growing because if that gets out of hand, that's obviously a problem to actually get rid of it and it's definitely a danger to your health. So this is something that I am constantly checking for in all the wetter areas of the house. As South Africans, we are of course also used to basically having unlimited sun and everyone knows that it rains a lot in the UK, but the thing that you might not know is that it also gets dark really early in the winter. And when I say early, I am not being dramatic. Sometimes it can look like it's eight at night and then it's only four o'clock in the afternoon. Having the darkness and the winter at the same time is not an ideal combination. But at least it's completely the opposite once we get into spring and summer. Currently it's springtime and the sun only sets around 9 o'clock, which is absolutely amazing. It feels like you have the longest day. And I definitely feel like we deserve the extra daylight because we've gone through a long, cold and dark winter. We've made it to the last thing that you need to know before moving to the UK and that is that your South African winter clothes just aren't gonna cut it for a winter here in the UK. You know, your trusty jacket that gets you through every South African winter, well that jacket is going to feel like a cardigan when you're here in the UK. I would definitely recommend saving up some money so that you can buy a proper jacket when you arrive here in the UK. I find that the jackets from South Africa, even the ones that I bought specifically for outdoor activities, are still not padded enough and you also need something that's going to be windproof and waterproof. Waterproof is a big one because you definitely want something that you can walk around when it's raining. Umbrellas aren't that common because you usually have to deal with the wind as well. So having a waterproof warm jacket with a hood is a way better option. Obviously you can't just throw out all your South African clothes. So what I've been doing is just layering a lot of my clothes and then I've started to slowly build up my closet with warmer jumpers, warmer jackets and more thermal clothing. Also don't forget to invest in a nice pair of gum boots or Wellington boots as they call them here in the UK. It's definitely going to make your life so much easier when you have to walk around in the rain. That covers all 10 things that I wanted to share with you today. I hope those points have been useful for anyone that's moving over to the UK or has been interesting for anyone that's just curious. If you enjoyed this video, please remember to give it a thumbs up down below. I would massively appreciate that. And if you want to see more of my videos, more tips about moving from South Africa to the UK, also remember to subscribe because I post every week. Thank you so much for watching and then I'll see you in my next video.